All right, everyone, we start off today talking about economics yet again. Really, uh, Biden is so boring that unless he makes a major gaffe, and that's a day-to-day -day occurrence, so yeah, it's not always necessarily newsworthy. His, his six out of ten gaffes are no longer even funny because he keeps launching ten out of ten gaffes. You see what Jen Psaki said the other day with regards to a <laughs> vaccination mortality. Uh, but anyway, uh, I figured that we would talk about uh, the Biden inflation, specifically link in the description archived, of course, the public's perception of the economic situation. Uh, it doesn't paint a very rosy picture for the Biden administration <laughs> or for the Democrats in the midterms, which is probably why right now they're trying to take that out of the uh, news cycle. They're trying to squish out the inflation story by fixating on Brett Kavanaugh again, the Democrats pretending to be outraged about the FBI handling with with kid gloves, they had all these tips that we didn't hear about. Kavanaugh never should have been confirmed. Uh, it's kind of too late now, right? Just like it's too late to uh, swap out Joe Biden for a different Democrat, even though he's clearly demented and the Democrats are starting to get nervous. Uh, by the way, down below, a pinned comment if you're watching this video on YouTube with links to four other video hosting sites that I use, first and foremost. Uh, keep in mind, I make two videos a day that are exclusive to those platforms. You're not going to see them on YouTube, uh, oftentimes because of the subject material, other times just because of algorithms. YouTube punishes you if you make more than two videos in a 24-hour period. Um, today I have to do a third, though, because there's a really big literary update. Stay tuned. Trust me, you're going to want a copy of what I've written now. Anyway, I think, based on this, and any single poll, of course, you shouldn't trust, but it can give you a general barometer of things unless it's a push poll. Um, this would comport roughly uh, the, the uh, woes of the economy being on people's minds uh, with what you hear if you just observe public discourse, if you look at other polls, so you can get a pretty good scatter shot and, and try to find sort of the median ground. Uh, the majority of the public, in fact a super majority, more than two-thirds easily, uh, is worried about the current economic situation. I would say crisis myself, uh, although uh, they, they assure us that the uh, prices skyrocketing is just transitory. Don't worry. We'll spend $3.5 trillion more than we already spent causing, you know, the first bump of an inflation uh, several months later already to begin with. Don't worry, though. Long term, that'll solve the crisis. That'll actually lower inflation by creating better jobs or something like that. Uh, to be clear, um, if Biden's supposedly bipartisan pork barrel bill is passed, I expect that it'll fall flat. It'll cause higher prices, certainly higher taxes. That's beyond uh, debate, I suppose. Um, it, it, will, it will cause the currency to depreciate considerably. Your life savings will be cheapened. Um, the infrastructure part of it is small, and it won't be meaningful. It's not going to generate any real long-term jobs. Uh, it's shovel-ready 2.0, only way, way more expensive. Biden doesn't have a clue what he's doing. To be fair, he doesn't need to because he's demented. He's not running the show. The problem is that when you have someone who's so clearly out to lunch, public confidence in the economy, business confidence suffer. This is why we're having economic problems. It's not that Joe Biden has completely overhauled the economic system that was there. It's just that he's threatening to do so. He's causing people to take money out of the economy. Why the fuck would I invest in a business knowing that the government, number one, can lock down my small business at any given time, killing it completely. Number two is too gridlocked to give me a bailout when that happens. And number three, that that property, I'm not going to find a buyer for it. Why on earth would I invest in the current economy? Especially when it's a depreciating value. Now, let's say that I invest a million dollars into the US economy right now. By the end of the year, it might only have half that much in actual purchasing power. And <laughs> if, if I have to offload whatever assets I've uh, obtained, I'm screwed. Now this is great for the Fortune 500 companies. It's allowing them to buy up their smaller competitors. BlackRock right now, big in the news, it takes out 0% interest loans, gobbles up properties for twice the value, simply knowing that it can slowly create monopoly zones that it can eventually uh, increase massively in price. In an economy that right now is badly depreciated because of a combination of lockdownerism and Bidenomics, Biden is going to fuck up the economy worse. I think that by the midterms, people are going to realize this regardless of the best efforts of the 
uh, the Fed to cover it up. They're, they're going to try to cover for Biden's ass. They'll do whatever they can to try to control inflation. Uh, that later on, it blows up in your face, but they'll give him a solid. They'll do him a solid. Uh, give him a little bit of a reach around while he fucks the economy in the ass. Um, they'll do everything that they can for him, but I don't think it'll be enough. I think we've already seen that. A much smaller spending spree at the beginning of his presidency has caused 5.4% inflation. Again, steadily higher month over month, higher than expected month over month, approaching 6% at this point. That's for less than half of the amount of spending that Biden is now uh, expecting to fritter away on pet projects. To be clear, the infrastructure bill, so-called, is mostly pork anyway. It's bullshit. It is shovel-ready. It's like it's Pete Buttigieg uh, judges uh, a pet project. Oh, we're going to make more Amtrak lines. That'll really make the economy bigger. People being able to take a, a snail train from one location to another instead of just fucking getting into a plane. Well, if the transit is happening anyway, you haven't added anything to the economy by simply diversifying the method of travel. Just to be clear, you haven't increased the number of travelers. You've just given those same travelers a different option. If anything, you've taken a, an airline's ticket away. That's not going to grow the economy. Billions and billions of dollars in his so-called stimulus and infrastructure bill are earmarked for this shit. Hundreds of billions, I believe. Hundreds of billions more for nonsensical projects, some of which are race-based. None of these are holding up in court, so they'll be struck down anyway. Biden inflation is probably here to stay for at least the intermediate term. The problem is that takes you pretty close to the midterms now, doesn't it? By that time, prices will have skyrocketed out of sight. You are seeing an economic situation, even with the crime. Biden is looking more and more like Jimmy Carter by the day. You've got li literally everything is the same. You have inflation. Unemployment ticked up for last month. Eh, it might be ticking up still now. It's still relatively high, although it's not as catastrophically high as it was months ago. Uh, you know, like in, in at the end of Trump's term, because of the COVID lockdownerism, it was in, in the double-digit range at first. Much of it had already been reabsorbed. I love how Biden tries to take credit for that. You, you do realize that Trump as well did this. Well, we just had record economic growth. Yeah, but that's the restoration of what you yourself have tinkered with and broken. Not Trump, but the government at large at the state level. Biden had nothing to do with it uh, any more than Trump did. Um, that being said, when I look at the situation, I don't really see any methodology by which Biden solves that problem. Uh, inflation and, and, and an economic downturn. And then you've got crime. Crime back in the Jimmy Carter era was steadily increasing. It became a social issue. Well, fucking the doppelganger of that is 2021. <laughs> it's happening all over again. Again, it, it correlates with economic problems. It's not correlated with guns. It's not correlated with, with demographics. It's correlated with the fact that a lot of people are out of work, depressed, uh, and, and, and filled with rage. And the fact that they're getting propagandized to 24-7 about critical race theory. Again, I will be releasing a book about that. Uh, you uh, mentioned that later today. So that's similar to the Jimmy Carter era. You've got a, a frenetic foreign policy. <laughs> Afghanistan oh, it looks about the same as it did in the 70s, now doesn't it? Except for the Soviet troops not arriving. Um, what hasn't Biden screwed up? We're supposed to believe that the Democrats are going to have a legit... I mean, they're not even acting as a serious political party at the moment. They're not even trying to do anything. They're, they're obstructing themselves, number one. They're, again, they're trying to boot the economy out of the news cycle entirely. They don't want to talk about policing and crime. They don't want to talk about inflation. They'd rather talk about Brett Kavanaugh, a person already appointed to SCOTUS and duly voted on. That's what's in the news cycle. New questions about the Kavanaugh FBI investigation. Nobody cares. He's already there. Meanwhile, Ma and Pa America are paying, ah, I don't know, double digits more for every good and service year over year, and this is considered something, yeah, we can put that on the back burner, we'll talk about that later, we'll circle around to it at some point. Well, Jen Psaki and Joe Biden and all of their cronies and allies all have at least six figures in their bank accounts, mostly seven or even eight. They don't care about inflation. You'd have to have Yugoslavia levels of inflation before it would begin to touch them, and half of their uh, uh, portfolio isn't in the United States, so ultimately they don't really give a fuck. Uh, but Ma and Pa America, a little bit of a different story. 
I think every Democrat should be kicked out of Congress, except for Manchin and Cinema and arguably Gene Shaheen at this point. There's like three or four Democrats that are actually doing their goddamn job representing their own constituents' interests. Hell, the Texas Democrats, uh, the, the entire Democratic side of the legislature are currently fugitives from justice because they're pants-pissing babies who aren't willing to establish quorum, literally violating Texas law at the moment, in order to take Instagram selfies. They're not standing even for voters' rights. The Democrats have ceased at the moment to function as a serious political party. People would like to pretend that the Republicans are the ones that are out, uh, out to lunch. Well, you know, Trump isn't currently in office. You can talk about his Twitter all you want. Mm, I, I think that the serious party is the one that's at least attempting to do its job. Again, as a non-Republican, I, I realize that the Republican Party often acts the jester as well, but right now I don't think that there's any real question about which party is actually not taking things seriously and uh, basically pissing its time away. That's about all. Peace out.